And so I thought, what if I can get my shoes on and just run and just get away from this? Because as crazy as home was, it was still home. And I, I couldn't. And so I packed my things up in a garbage bag. And they took my little sister and I to the Child Protective Services office. That's right, we're on live. We're gonna get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? Um, their foster parents had said that I could see them whenever I wanted, but that never happened that way. Um, and basically <clears throat> it, it was just, it was a hard situation. And when my grandfather died, um, they, CPS had told us that, um, we were allowed to go with, uh, our mom to the funeral. But then after the funeral, we had to be home within an hour following it or else they would deny us visitation the following week and so i mean it was it was just it was hard and my my older brother he he had gotten out of boot camp and uh shortly after that he was going to be deployed and they wouldn't even let us spend christmas with him if it, and when you, and when you say it was hard i mean you, you spoke on on those instances mm -hmm. what other what other instances that really sort of made living un, un, under CPS uh, a, a, a very, you know, hard thing to do. What you else? know, it was, it was the not knowing. It was the not knowing and um, just my <laughs> my life being totally turned upside down. I mean, I I suffer, suffered with a lot of depression mm -hmm. and, I, and I realized that now that I'm older. Back mm -hmm. then, I just, I didn't know what was going on. Um, but... My whole life was turned upside down. Everything that I knew, I was taken away from. My siblings were taken away from, and I was taken away from my siblings. And um, just the 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 amount of control that CPS had taken in our lives. You know, they told us when we could see each other and when we couldn't see each other. They told us, you know, where we could go and where we couldn't go. And you know, being being you know a 16, 17 year old that was that was tough um i was i was angry and um i mean just everything in life was just totally blown to smithereens everything that i knew and you know it it just um it changed everything my my siblings and i haven't had the same relationship since then i think oh, yeah okay. that's interesting. so so it's more so the control that they had in terms of trying to dictate your your lives telling you mm -hmm. what, to, what to do do you think all all see uh, uh child protection agencies are like that or just this particular one i i don't know um i've heard stories from others um and of some bad experiences and i've heard stories some good experiences and honestly what i'm coming to realize nowadays is wherever there is a collective organization of people there are always going to be problems because there there are always some people who are not there for the purpose of the agency like cps there what i was told when we were taken in foster care was that the purpose of cps was to bring families back together but from what i saw with my experience they tore us apart i mean like i said i i don't hear from my siblings very often my my little sister um is involved in some things that are, de that are destroying her life. Yeah. Um, my little brother, you know, I mean, our, our relationship just, it was shattered after that. It's never been you, the same. Do you think that they felt or they feel that it was more so you not wanting to get in touch with them or do they have any idea that it, it was more, it was more of the agency that was keeping y'all at bay? You know, I, I wish I knew. Um, I, I know, I know though that it, it took that instance for me to be able to like say the words I love you to them. That's kind of the way that home was. I mean, like we we knew we were loved, even if we didn't always feel like it, you know, because when you're a kid, 
love is subjective. Um, but it, it, it took that instance, and, and I think that that's where that there was some closeness that came out of that. I mean, it, it I really had to push to say those words because those words, I don't recall them being said at home very much, mm. but I, I don't know with my siblings. Um, I, I tried to email them, but their foster parents would read the emails. And so it was like, how could I, how could I have a personal close relationship with them when everything was being monitored? And I mean, I understand that to some, to some degree that has to happen because mm -hmm. p kids who go into foster care, I mean, honestly, I'll, I'll be very real about it. I dealt with a lot of suicidal thoughts when I went into foster care. I mean, my world was flipped upside down. I was a pessimist and I, I wanted to die. I felt like there was like no life and everything now, was just a mess. Now feeling that way, uh, what, what was it? First of all, how, 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 how old were you when you were released uh, from foster care? It was after I graduated high school, pretty much after I turned 18. And what about um, your brother, brothers and sisters? You know, they, they came back, oh man, I don't know if it was weeks or months after that it, it um i don't even remember the time frame like some of that some of that those years were so painful that i think that part of my mind has just blocked it out so where are they now you know they they um they're they're on their own now well it's it's sad because i i it, i don't even know the city that my sister's in anymore um i i love my family to death but that that situation with CPS shattered our family even worse than, you know, I mean, I said it was dysfunctional before, but after that, it, it totally shattered everything. They wow. did the furthest thing from, from bringing our family together. They shattered us. And, and the fact that you were longing for your relationship with your brothers and your brother and sister, uh, and that didn't happen. What other things that kind of like, because you, you say you were, uh, you contemplated suicide. What other things transpired during the times, time which kind of uh, affected you? You know, so <clears throat> I was getting ready to start my senior year of high school, and it was the same high school that I had been in for the previous three years. And um, before, um, before my best friend's mom took custody of me. My foster mom, who was a math teacher at a vocational school, had told me, she said, you should look at coming over here. And I thought, I can't deal with that change right now. I've already been, you know, I've already had everything else ripped away from me. I, I can't deal with the change. But then I went back to the high school that I was at. And all of a sudden, I hear, you know, you know how high school works. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, everybody knows everything. At least, at least where I was at. My, my town was a small town, the town that I grew up in. Hmm. my graduating class was like 36 everybody knew what was going on there and so i went back to school and people were making comments about the foster care situation and i just broke down and i said i i want to go to the vocational school and so it ended up working out for me to be able to go there and um i spent my senior year over at a vocational school in a business computer technologies program and so that was a huge change it's totally different environment totally different people but at least over there next to nobody knew what was going on and i didn't have to hear about it because the last thing i wanted was a reminder of what i was going through like it was it was so painful and um and so that that change went on um you know and again that was shortly after my grandmother died and my, my grandmother was she was my best friend mm -hmm. as a child and then you know having having my grandfather pass away in 2002 um you know, four or five months before was released from foster care and not being able to see him and not being able to spend time with him. There were so many tugs and pulls going on inside. Um, it was, it was one of the most painful experiences in my life. It really was. And so how, so, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're fine. How, how, so now that you've gotten older and you have your kids and what have you, what, what, <laughs> How, how are things different um, in terms of you rearing them and, and showing them love and, and, and just this, the connection? How is it now? With my boys, um, the three of us have been through a lot together. And, you know, come March, it'll be six years that I've been on my own with them. And one of the things that I learned through that foster care experience 
was that if if there's someone in your life who's close and you love them to don't wait to tell them that and so my boys i tell them that i love them all the time you know and they they um they come up to me for hugs my youngest he's still you know he's about 80 or 90 pounds he still wants to be picked up my, my oldest my oldest who's like you know 190 pounds or so he wants to be picked up and, and <laughs> i'm glad i still can pick him up but you know that happened for too long so they're getting but all the love that, that you can give them right they are because i didn't have that from my dad when my dad was alive and my mom's boyfriend was not a good father figure to us you know and 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 the thing is is as negative of a, an experience as it was it taught me that it's okay to say the words i love you to people who you love it's it's not something that you should hold in and like those words those words have such a huge impact on the hearer that we we don't understand just to know that you know especially nowadays with everything that's going on in this world and the way people are treating people for somebody to hear the words i love you that yeah. that could that could save someone's life yep, that's true and so that's, that's one thing that I've learned is don't hold those words back from people because the the, the power of those words really is life changing. And I mean, it, it saddens me to think because like even when I was there facing my little brother and little sister, when they were getting ready to go um, into their, you know, the foster home that they were in, I had to push to say those words. And I could barely get them out. And nowadays it's like, I just, if there if there's someone in my life who I love, you know, my, my girlfriend, I love her to pieces, and there's no way I could go without telling her that. My kids, there's no way I could go without telling them that because, you know, if something was to happen to me, mm -hmm. I would want I would want the last thing for any of them to remember that I loved them. You know, and those words have such a tremendous impact that we don't even realize when we see so much hate going on in this world. I feel you, and I'm I'm so glad that you it uh it, it had a different effect on you as far as you, you being able now to to tell the person tell people that you love them and share that. So when you hear the as we sum it up, and when you hear the when you hear the word foster care or someone being placed in foster care or reading a story or whatever, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Honestly, it breaks my heart because I mean it could be that the the child or children going into foster care are getting out of a bad situation. But there's also the the chance that they're going from a bad situation to a good one i mean i mean a good situation to a bad one mm. you know there there are situations that i've read where you know kids are taken away from blind parents and that's a that's a subject all in, in and of itself yeah, I mean, definitely definitely and and you know they're they're being taken away from loving able you know able capable parents all because their eyes don't i mean like i said that's another story altogether but when i hear about foster care it scares me because I just I have a hard time when I when I hear the mention of CPS because of the things that I dealt with with them. And I know that not every CPS worker is like that, but in every field, there are going to be some people who are simply there for the paycheck. They don't care about the people. And when when these kids are in this situation, I mean. I can't imagine what it's like being a parent and having it taken away from me. I, I don't know, but being a kid who was taken away and just torn apart from everything that, you know, I knew, um, the way that CPS dealt with it was terrible. I felt like they could have cared less. Um, gotcha. and, and so it's like, it scares me to hear that someone's going into foster care. Um, it, it makes me sometimes wish I could be a foster parent. You know, I'm I'm not perfect, and I don't have a lot to offer, but I can at least give a loving home. Love is a love is a great deal to offer to give them and whatnot. And um, during all this during all this time, where was your where was your mom during during the time you were in uh, foster care? She she made she made a bad choice, um, and I don't say any any of this in any disrespect to her because you know we're all trying to navigate this complexity known as life, mm -hmm. um, but. She could have had us back sooner, at least that's what she was told, but she didn't make the choice they wanted her to make. And so we stayed in there for like over a year and a half. And um, <clears throat> essentially it just, you know, after, after she realized that she made the wrong choice, she just, she worked to get us back, but she had her bad times 
with CPS and and the again the caseworker who we had was a very terrible person to communication communicate with. She she had a very harsh sounding voice. She seemed like she could have cared less about putting a family back together mm. or, or anything of that nature. Um, so you know, my mom she she was just doing the best that she could. Okay. And how's your relationship with her at the at this point? You know, um, we we talk. Um, I try to I try to talk to her on the phone at least once a week. Um, she um, she was out here with my boys and I for a while, but California is not an easy place to live in. Um, and so she moved back to Ohio. Um, and again, that's that's with the exception of my older brother, that's where all of my family is is back there. And so I'm over here in California, like 2,400 miles away or so and and if you can yeah. say if you can have any any words that you want you know to, to say to your brother and sister right now what would you say to them you know i would just tell all of them that that i love them you know more than i can describe and um i'm just looking forward to the day when i can be around them again and see them and hear their voices and just like spend time with them and catch up on all of these years in life because I mean I've been out here for 13 years and last year was the first time that I set foot in Ohio for like over a decade and um, you know they don't really get to come out this way because we <laughs> we've been under the poverty level all these years you know and so um, you know my older it's just like I just want them to know that I love them and I'm glad that they're my siblings um, and my mom that I love her and um, that I know she she did her best to take care of as, as crazy as life was and um, I just I love my family and I'm looking forward to someday down the road when we can be, be together again. <laughs> I can tell you are definitely a family man I could just hear in your voice and I can it's, I know it's hard for you to you talking about it because I'm, I'm a family man as well. And when, when something happens within my family where I can't see them or get with them, because you never know what may happen, man. You know, you, you really want to try to keep that, that line of communication uh, open. But, you know, and I hope that one day you are, you are able to do, to do so. So for those individuals who may have had encounters such as this, what advice can you give them? You know, for, for the kids, I mean, if, I don't know what device is. I'm sure there's some kids who might be watching something like this. You know, for the kids, all I can say is just keep strong and think of the good memories. Find some good books to read, you know, and, and keep your mind off of the hurt. I mean, you, you have to you have to embrace the hurt and you have to deal with it. If, if you hold it in, it's, it's going to eat you up. And, you know, the same for the parents. Like if you're separated from your kids, do everything that you're allowed to do to show them that you love them. If you're allowed to write them letters, write them letters. If you were in a bad place and that's what caused you to lose your kids, it's not too late, you know, to get them back. You know, it, it, you just just make sure you take the steps that you need because it's, it's not too late to turn around, you know, and just make sure your kids know that you love them and don't, you know, no matter how hard it is, don't keep those three words inside. You need to make sure that you speak them because with a lot of us, if you don't hear it spoken, you just don't know, you know? Real talk, Real talk man. As words say it come up from a wise man. I'm proud of you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity to bring you back on here and speak on, uh, and I know it was hard, personal issues such as this, what not. Ah! <laughs>